Waters presents On the Box. Edition of On the Box. <laughs> right before we go on, Ray looks at me and he says, do you love me? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, of course I do. And then he gets that grin and then he takes my notes right as the yeah. show starts. I that was wonderful. Blank page for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you love me? Yeah, okay. yeah, Tony, that's why I did it. Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, we've got a special program for you today. A good friend of the ministry, Robert Gray, is going to be with us. Out of the foxhole, our first guest in the foxhole. That's mm, pretty exciting. That is exciting. Robert's an academy grad, uh, a couple of academies, different academies. He'll tell you about that. Where's, where's Robert from? Robert is originally from Colorado, oh, okay. but no one knows where he's from now because he's all over the world. Really? Yeah, I, yeah his, his zip code is like 0001 or something <laughs> like that. That's very interesting. Yeah. You thought so? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I was just making it up as I go. <laughs> um, also going to talk to you about an opportunity maybe to come out and do some evangelism with me at the location where one of our favorite hecklers, the man who yells, you're full of it, mm -hmm. in the intro, uh, Third Street Promenade. We'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, the giveaways are back. We... Yes. Very good. With your approval. <laughs> <laughs> That's really important. Yeah. We want to move yeah. up to those Toyotas. Yes. Well, you know... <laughs> Here's the thing. There was a really nice car out in the parking lot, right? Ron comes into my office and he says, hey, that's Eddie's car. Why don't, let's take a picture of it and announce <laughs> that as the giveaway. So I did. And, he's, and then Ron shifted right back into grown-up mode and he said, no, 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 wait. Now, if we do that, they're going to say, oh, you know, th this, that, and the other about money and things like that. Well, I, so I email all of you the picture and it turns out it's not. Eddie's car. Whose car is it? Well, I don't want to say whose car it was, but someone visiting the ministry today okay. who volunteers from time to time. Uh -huh. Nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> Mother of someone we know real well. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, I got it. Yeah. That's a nice so, car. So it wasn't even Eddie's car that we were going to give away. We were going to give away her car. That might have been bad to yeah. do that. So. Yeah. But we're not going to give away her car. We're not giving away any cars of any kind. But uh, we'll talk to you in a minute or two about uh, what we are going to do for the giveaways. We're going to make it uh, so that folks who can't watch the show live can participate, and we think that's a good thing. Yeah, it's been a long time since we mentioned the mustaches. It's been a long time since we rock and roll, too. You mentioned mustaches. You have had a trim. I trimmed You've it, got yeah. You've the lawnmower. Well, well, I was trying to, I'm trying to keep pace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it was getting to the point, it was getting to the point where, you know. It's a good trim. You think so? Did it take long? Really? Do it yourself? I, yes, I it do it myself. It looks like it's professionally done, actually. Really? Yeah. Well, I professionally did Every it myself. Every hair is in place. Ray, why you're setting me up for something? You're complimenting no, I'm me not. way too no, much. No, no, it's it's penitence for this. You know, <laughs> I did trim it myself, and after church yesterday, Maria says, "Tony, come here." I said, "What? You have one hair that's not the same as the other." I said, "Honey," she said, "Come on." So she trimmed that one for me. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So Maria, if you're watching, thank you very much. Was honey. it we nasal? We have all or things what? in common. Wasn't just no, it wasn't nasal. <laughs> no, I have a trimmer for that too, but I don't think anyone cares. No, I don't care. No one cares. Okay. All right, before we get started, we want to uh, show you a picture of one of our viewers, a young man by the name of Colson Crawford. There's Colson reading, reading his latest. Yeah, that's your book, Ray. God has a wonderful plan for your life. He's sitting there in the car seat. Oh, reading. I thought it was a plane or something. I thought that. No. <laughs> I don't, I don't think our books were that big. That guy looks young. <laughs> he is young. Yeah, and here's another another picture of, a picture of him when he came to visit the ministry oh, not uh, too cool. long ago. Uh, he drove, apparently, the family car uh, to get to the ministry. <laughs> he did. Colson is a, he's going to, well, you know, it's, Tim is the strapping young fellow who picks you up oh, at every yes, academy. Oh, yes, he gave me a lift. That's his, yeah, yeah that's his little boy who's probably going to be a professional fullback someday. Yeah. So, but he's... An intelligent young man who reads good books Obviously. at this early age. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, one of the questions out of the chat room was, when are you going to start the giveaways again today? We're going to start them today. But we're going to do it different. Instead of a daily giveaway, we're going to make it a weekly uh, giveaway. And this will, again, allow not only you folks who are watching live, but those who watch on Light, Light Source, mm -hmm. One Place, Ustream, uh, YouTube, the various places where the show is uh, posted, you'll have an opportunity to uh, enter in as well. So here are the rules, and I'm going to be saying this over the next two or three days because some people just don't get it the first time. Uh, each week we're going to select a first, a second, and third prize winner for the week, not for the day. 
All right, very important. Uh, you can only enter once each week. <laughs> it's not every day. Uh, email us at onthebox at livingwaters.com, onthebox at livingwaters.com. All entries must have your full name, your full address, including your zip code. And if you enter without that information, you get nothing. You sound like, what's his name on Schultz? Schultz? Yeah, on Hogan's Heroes. I know nothing! <laughs> <laughs> you get nothing. That's good. Uh, so, entries will be, uh, you can start entering as soon as we announce the prizes. We'll announce the prizes for the following week on Monday. And you can enter through Sunday afternoon, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Again, you just enter by emailing us the appropriate information at on the box at livingwaters.com. We will announce the winners on the show on Mondays uh, before we announce the prizes for the following week. So what? Could you run through that again? I missed it. Okay. <laughs> You're a lot of information. <laughs> uh, the prizes for this week. Third prize will be five packs. Five. Not one. Five, five. packs of trillion dollar bills. Five packs. It's Your five favorite trillion. gospel track. It is. And that's why I picked mm -hmm. it, sir. Mm -hmm. And it's great. Yes. So I'm running short. Uh, second prize will be the uh, textbook for the School of Biblical Evangelism. I like that, Some too. person will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're really going to like this that's one. That's a phone book. The grand prize will be a hardcover phone book known as the New Evidence Bible. In New King James Version. In the and New King James Red Version. Red Letter Version. Red Letter, New King James, updated mm -hmm. comments, a lot more information. Mm -hmm. You need a truck to carry around. You need a truck, yes. <laughs> it is not your pocket Bible. Right. Yeah. So if you would like to win one of those three prizes and only one, enter once at on the box at livingwaters.com and we will announce the winners for this week's giveaway next Monday. All right. Here's a question. How can a person who is housebound because of an illness obey God and preach the gospel? You can do it via email, internet, yeah. whatever. Just go for it. You can you know what I would do? What? If I became housebound, I'd rig up a telephone system where I could just lie in my bed and just speak out numbers and I'd call random people and say, I'm housebound, I'm sick. I want to share with people how they can find everlasting life or to be willing to talk to me. I might get one out of ten. Yeah. But that would be a wonderful way to spend your time. You probably ought to start with the words, I am not a telemarketer. Yes. I, I am not with the government. And I'm not <laughs> selling anything. I'm not selling anything. Yeah. Would, yeah. You, would you give me a couple of minutes? Yeah, you know what? Uh, didn't Todd Friel, uh, in in uh, the olden days of his uh, first radio show, mm -hmm. didn't he do that randomly call people yeah, out randomly, of the phone book? But that was on the radio. That's a yeah. little bit more pressure <laughs> than doing it in the <laughs> comfort of your own home. Can you imagine a half hour of people hanging up on you? That'd be a tough show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it would. But um, yeah, I, I would do that. Just call random numbers. Just go through the phone book. Yeah. And you're going to get people answer and like one, uh, get one out of ten. That's incredible. Take a little bit of boldness, but sure. do two or three. You say, boy, this is wonderful. Hey, you can also go to whitepages.com. Uh, use the uh, reverse directory feature. Uh, you type in your address or phone number, and it'll come up with all of the addresses and phone numbers for your neighbors. Mm -hmm. You could uh, write a short gospel presentation, maybe put a million-dollar bill in the envelope. Don't put the return address if you don't want them knocking on your door. Mm. And just uh, y you know, uh, address the envelope, my neighbor, their address, and uh, my one, my wonderful neighbor, my wonderful mm. neighbor, my wonderful neighbor mm. who will read what's inside this envelope. <laughs> yeah, that might be a little long for the envelope. It could be. Uh, telemarketers, when they call, volunteer to take their surveys, so yeah. long as they'll let uh, you do a survey when they're done. Yeah, you could start a website called We Love Telemarketers. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Take yourself off the block list. <laughs> you know, um, something my wife does, something mm -hmm. Maria does, is uh, you know we constantly are inundated with junk mail and you know uh, offer for this, offer for that, credit cards, this mm -hmm. and that. We don't like credit cards, and so but they are kind enough to give you that uh, self-addressed stamped. Uh, stamped envelope, mm. and so instead of putting in an application. Maria puts in a gospel tract and Send sends it back, it back to them. To them. Mm -hmm. We didn't want their mail. Maybe they'll want ours. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right. Uh, how do you answer someone who says, creating a God in your own mind is not the same as carving a graven image and therefore not one of the Ten Commandments? Just say it is. Thank you. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. It says, yeah. Th uh, Paul says in Romans, verse, the law is spiritual. <laughs> the law is spiritual. God requires truth in the inward parts and he considers lust to be the same as adultery. Know that those people that disagree with idolatry being something of the mind, right. we'll disagree with that too. God equates hatred with murder, and you can create a God in your mind that you don't shape into a, into a physical shape, but it's still a mind that governs your morality, and it's very dangerous to do that. Yeah. 
Very good. All right, one more before we uh, watch a video of Robert preaching. Uh, how should we use creation in our gospel presentation? Did we show Robert on camera? Did no, 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 because he's the guest. Oh. He's way over there well, in the other is, studio. Is, oh, yeah. Way over there, because he's going to stare. He's going to He's going to talk to us in the camera because he knows not to look to the right as if we're only 18 inches away. Should we call he's Robert and tell him that we're going to... Well, he's watching uh, on oh. a monitor. Okay. In so fact, it might even be the same monitor <laughs> we're viewing right now, <laughs> and I think he's within earshot, so he knows oh, okay. that his time is coming soon. It's okay. So back to the question. How should we use creation in our gospel presentation? Oh, it's the same way Paul did. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, if you're Acts 17, yeah. uh -huh. there's a good example. Just see what Paul did, do the same thing. What did Paul do? He used uh, creation? Yeah. Yeah, in Acts 17. Acts 17. Yeah, well, go he there. spoke to the Athenians. So just study Acts 17 and see how Paul spoke to the idolaters, uh, the Athenians, and uh, do the same. And did I just see Danny yawn in the back there? Well, I heard him yeah, yawn. In, yeah, fact, he in fact, had I had hair, it would have blown the part from one side to the other. Yeah, well, I just, was the I just yawn. noticed that Daniel, it, Daniel's missing. He got <laughs> sucked in. <laughs> you Sorry, got the Danny. Blow. Danny, we're doing the best we can, man. We're trying to keep <laughs> you awake back there, brother. All right. Okay. All right, so we're going to segue. Obviously, Danny's tired of us talking. We need to see a video. It's a sign. Um, Robert Gray is our guest uh, today, and we'll be introducing Robert in about six minutes. But first, we okay. want to show you Robert at work serving the Lord at uh, George Mason University in Maryland. Here's a segment of one of the open airs he did there. Take oh. a look. Uh, Robert Gray, I'm out here with my friend. We're out here because we care about you. Uh, one of the things that I really like about coming to university, it reminds me of the university that I went to. I went to a, a, a unique university. I, I was able to jump out of airplanes while we were there. What's your name, Before you got and stood, before you jumped out of the airplane, they would put you in the door. They would say, stand in the door. Imagine if we jumped out of the airplane without a parachute. What would happen to us? Well, bless you. You would die. Thanks for coming by. That's why me and my friends are out here to tell people. Yes, you're right. But imagine jumping out of an airplane without a parachute, and if it's in the air, at 10,000 feet. But many people are not equipped for what is going to happen next. Many people are going to pass from this life into the next without the parachute. And me and my friends are here to talk about that parachute and what will happen to you because of how you live your life on this earth, what the purpose of life is, what will happen to you if you pass from this life into the next without your parachute. You see, some time ago, there was a man named Jesus Christ. Because of who he is and what he did, he was the center of time, all time, because of what happened to him on the cross, is the center of time and the center of all the universe. And I'm here to talk to you about what happened to him. You see, some time ago, he gave his disciples, those who walked with him, he gave them a test. He asked them one question. He says, who is it that men say that I am? You see, just like many of you, you'll say this Jesus Christ. They said he was a prophet, that he was a good man, that he was a good teacher. You see, many people believe that, and that's what they say about this Jesus Christ. You see, then he turned to his prophets, to his disciples, and he said, who is it that you say to him that I am? You see, that's the question that each and every one of us has to answer. Who is this Jesus Christ? And you see, if you get the answer wrong, if you get this answer wrong, it will depend on, it will determine where you spend all of eternity. It will determine where you spend all of eternity. You see, we all know that something is going to happen to us when we die. We all know that there's something out there beyond this life that we live. Because that's what the Bible says. You see, God has written two things on our heart. You see, he's written eternity on our heart. We all know that there's something else out there. I know that you're thinking about it. You see, you see, young people between the ages of 17 and 24, they were Paul. They said, what is the meaning of life? We all know that there's something else out there besides just what we live on this earth. You see, some people believe that they're going to live a very long life. But what is 70 or 80 years old 
compared to all of eternity. It's nothing. It's nothing. We need to know where we're going to spend eternity. That's why me and my friends are here. We're here to tell you the truth. You, you see, we can look out and see that, that there is a God. You see, we see his creation. We see his creation before us. We look at ourselves. We look at our hands and our eyes and, and, and see how they work and see how our bodies work. We know that we're not here by accident, not by chance. You see, we're not here created in chaos. We're here made by a perfect creator. And yet, don't you know, like I said, he's written two things on our hearts. He's written eternity on our hearts. He also has written his law on our hearts. You see, we know that we do wrong because it pricks our conscience. God has given us all a conscience. You see, con conscience means with knowledge. We do things against God with knowledge. Con means with, science means knowledge. So when we break God's law, like I said, he's written his law on our hearts. You see, everybody here knows that it's wrong to lie. Everybody here knows that it's wrong to lie. But yet, we don't realize when we lie to somebody, that we're really lying to God. It's an offense to God, that's what, that's what sin is. We're here to talk about sin so people know when they lie that they're sinning against God. And I'll tell you why that's important in a second. You see, and we know every time we steal, we know that it's wrong. What man can say that he, he, he doesn't know that it is wrong to steal? We know that it's wrong to steal. You could go to another country, a thousand miles or eight thousand miles from here and the, they will tell you that it is wrong to steal and that it's wrong to lie and yet look at this the god who created us in his image he says don't take my name in vain he said that's called blasphemy when we take this god we drag his name across the ground he says if you do that with my name the person the god that created you he says you shall surely die you will not be held guiltless he promises to punish you Yet we live our lives as if there is no God. And yet because of who God is, he says you must obey me because he created us in his image. So when you lie to somebody else trying to get away with something, you're really lying against God and, and that person that he created. He said this. He says, thou shalt not commit adultery. We say, I've never slept with any man's wife or, or another woman's husband. But he says, if you look with lust, you've committed adultery of the heart. Can you imagine? That's how high the standard is. This God who will stand before and give an account of our lives. Yes, ma'am. I want to bring my class out to see if you're going to be here for a while. How long are you going to be here? Yes, ma'am. We'll be here. So forth. Okay. Now, Ray, that's something that doesn't happen every day when you have a professor at a college come out and say, hey, are you going to be here for a while? I want to bring out my class. <laughs> <laughs> what was his problem? Her? That was a her? It was a her. Oh. Yeah. She might to bring out a class. Yeah. Wow. I wonder what kind of class it was. Maybe, maybe our guest will tell us. So Robert Gray uh, first became known to us at Academy Number no. 7 mm -hmm. in uh, October of 2008. At the time, he was still in the Air Force. Robert has since retired. Retired a couple of years ago as a major. Graduated from the uh, United States Air Force Academy. A very squared away guy, as we like to say in mm -hmm. uh, military and paramilitary uh, circles. So we'd like to welcome Robert Gray to the program. Robert! <sighs> <laughs> So, Robert, you came to the Academy in October 2008. Why? What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great question. Uh, I, I went on a mission trip in 2007 with my church. I got back, and uh, God pricked my heart to, uh, to go out and share my faith. And uh, the person that I learned from, I had been uh, going out with him. Uh, we'd go to the lake or to the park uh, a few times a week and share share the gospel and he told me that he had come to the academy he was like i think you would love it you should go there i think it'd be a great experience for who, you. who was that that was uh steve johnson oh ah, okay yes and so you came yes i came yes yeah. i came i saw <laughs> i went <laughs> well, when i came in uh, 2008 I, uh -huh. I met some great people and it, actually my time at the academy it really changed my life i know um i wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for that i had a uh, when the time came for me to get out of the military, I thought I was going to go and be a missionary in one of the foreign countries, like in one of the stands over in Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. But I, I felt God speak to my heart that he was like, I don't need you to go to another country and learn another language. I need you here to preach the gospel. And uh, it sounded pretty crazy to me that I would go around and um, share the gospel, you know, just driving around from place to place. And I told one of my friends from, from my class, uh, Nicole Rotundi, 
and she got very excited when I told her that. And, I, and to me, it was sounding crazy. So she's like, Robert, my friend just sold this business, and, uh, and he's getting ready to go on the road and do the same thing. She was like, you guys are so much alike. And it was Mike Stockwell. So she gave me his number, and pretty much, he was like, call me when you get on the road. And I called him, and it hasn't been the same since. It's been a, a fantastic journey. So you're driving around alone, Robert? Yes, sir. Wow. Well, God bless you for your boldness. It's so, it's so, it so rejoices my heart and Tony's and all us to see you doing that. Well, you, do you get nervous just before you get up to preach? Uh, very much so. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you pray a lot just before you get up to preach. That's the power of nerves. It makes your knees weak. <laughs> yes, praise the Lord for that. So, Robert, where, where are some of the places you've uh, been? Now, you retired from uh, the Air Force a couple years ago and immediately set out to... Uh, do what Mike Stockwell is doing and basically going place to place wherever the Lord opens the door uh, to proclaim the gospel. Where are some of the places you've been? Um, when I first got started, I, I drove along the I-70 corridor. So mm -hmm. I started when I'd stop at the different gas stations. And, What's and, uh, the I-70 corridor? I'm it's a, a, the, one of the interstate systems. I-70 runs east, west, Colorado. across. Yes, sir. Out of Colorado. I left there and I drove to uh, Virginia. So pretty much along that I-70 corridor. I've driven up and down um, I-95. I've been everywhere from um, L.L. Bean in Maine all the way down south to Miami, Miami, Florida, all the big cities in between, Boston, D.C., uh, New York City, uh, D.C. I'm sorry, I said that before. Uh, Hamp Virginia Beach. I've been in my hometown in that area there, Atlanta. Uh, now, Dallas. Now, now you're, uh, when you and I were together out in, in Texas, uh, I think it was last, last fall, uh, you were telling me that your mother goes out yes, sir. every day. What does she do? My mom is, uh, she's retired, but she's very busy. My mom bakes cakes. <laughs> she bakes cakes, but recently she's got... As every mom should. Yes. She, she works as a, as a chaplain also at a, at a women's prison. She just got that job. But my mom would get up very early in the morning, and she goes out and she prays in the town that she, that she grew up in. There's 2,000 people there. And one morning I just got convicted, and I was like, my mom's out there witnessing. I need to be out there witnessing also. So I would just meet her in the, the center of town. There's one stoplight. So she's walking around praying, and uh, she carries some signs. And I just go out there and preach while she's... Uh, carrying her signs. Now, your ministry hasn't been limited to the uh, continental United States. Where have you been outside the country? Sir, for the, the month of January, we usually go to Jamaica. I go down there with uh, Mike Stockwell. Recently, we just got back from England, Scotland, and Wales with uh, Jeremiah Cry, and I've been to Kenya. Wow. So where, where are you heading next? I mean, do you have any big plans outside the U.S.? Or? Yes, sir. Um, well, next week or in a couple weeks, I hope to go to Arizona, the Major League All-Star <coughs> Game. Yeah. Major League Baseball All-Star Game is there. And then we're going to go to New Zealand. Oh, uh, whoa. Yeah. <coughs> what part of New Zealand? So we're going to go to Auckland for the Rugby World Cup. Oh, well, she just <laughs> do you want, need someone to carry your luggage? <laughs> 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 so the Rugby World Cup, that's great. We love rugby. Uh, Robert, do you have any information on how the plans are going for that uh, Outreach in New Zealand, have the recent <laughs> earthquakes affected that at all? Or? Sir, I, I don't think, I don't <coughs> No, that's in the, in the North Island, right. Auckland's in another right. island. There's two major islands. The earthquakes are in the South Island in the city of Christchurch, so it wouldn't have done anything for Auckland. Now, so the North Island wasn't affected by all not the quakes? Not at all. Really? No, no, they felt wow, a little amazing. shake, but uh, no, not like they had in Christchurch. So uh, I don't know if I mentioned, 1,800 people had uh, legs and arms amputated. It yeah. uh, was devastating, so it's a... Uh, but Auckland's uh, a city of about ooh, over a million people. Mm -hmm. It's very much like San Diego. It's called the City of Sales because they have a lot of yachts right, yeah, there. It's beautiful. I've been there. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, oh, that's right. You have too. It's, uh, it is really They talk funny, though. And I'll have to give you a few words not to say when you're over there. Okay? Well, th that's a teaser for the next <coughs> show, right? Yeah, there. no, I won't, be saying them on say I won't be saying them on camera. <laughs> <laughs> kidding? <laughs> Let's see if we can get No, we won't do that. Uh, Robert, uh, yeah, you're going to be joining us uh, here in July as part of the Academy uh, team leadership. Uh, what are you looking forward to as far as being part of the team? Sir, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting other seed sowers. It's a great opportunity to be with 50 like-minded brothers and, and encourage them, encouraging them to share their faith, stand up and uh, trust God. And uh, I'm just looking for the opportunity to, to be with them. Robert, did you open your preach before you came to the Academy? 
Ah, uh, no, sir. So wow. you went back and did what we taught you. Yes, sir. That I is would. wonderful. That, that's what it's all about. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd forgotten that that was your first time open air preaching. Now, Nicole says you and Mike are a lot alike. <laughs> now, that may be true in that you're both serving the Lord in the same way. <laughs> but I would hazard a guess. That, I don't know. You've met Mike. I, I think Robert's a little quieter. Just a little. Just a little quieter than Mike. Mm. A little more subdued until he gets up on a box. Mm -hmm. Until he gets up on a so box. So do you get hecklers, Robert? Uh, yes, sir. Do you like them? I I do not like them. You don't? <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> of course, you love them, but hecklers really help. You yes, know, sir. They, they bring life to a, uh, to a crowd. We pray for hecklers. I, the, the thought of having no hecklers to me is horrific. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, what's, what's uh, you know, probably the worst thing you've run into, whether it's a heckler or something else, while you've been out there uh, on the streets? I think th the worst thing, we were at a festival in North Carolina in the the, the crowd was so hostile. They were actually trying to knock us off the stool, pull us off the stool. The Had they been drinking? Yes, sir. There was yeah, a that's public the intoxication. It's called the demon of alcohol. It really is. It's called a spirit for a reason, alcohol. And, and, so, and so how did that work out? Actually, amongst all the chaos, there were groups of people that would come around and ask us to pray for them, that they wanted their lives right. changed. Amen. And we had people coming up to us Christians and saying, this is an effective, people aren't listening to, <laughs> listening to you, but amongst the chaos, <clears throat> you know, people would come over and, and ask us to pray for them. I think, I, I just thought it was beautiful. So what were Christians doing there at that thing <laughs> yeah. if they weren't sharing the gospel? Yeah, makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's <laughs> rhetorical. <laughs> <laughs> now, Robert, amongst uh, some of those people who are professing to be Christians, any of them among the intoxicated uh, Oh, definitely. Group? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's Always. Sad. Very, very sad. Well, now, uh, on the video, there was a website that came up. That's not Robert's video. That's uh, another friend of the ministry, Sean Holes. That's his uh, website, rather. And, uh, Robert, at present, you don't have a website, right? So they can just go to crosscountryevangelism.com, uh, Mike's website, to find out what you guys are doing? Yes, sir. Okay. So how can people contact you? Anyway, well, smoke signals. Have you got a Have you got a email address? I do have an email Did address. You is it one you want to give? Yeah, <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. My if my email address is rsleepyg at yahoo.com. Could you say that again slowly? rsleepyg at yahoo.com. When com. you say sleepy g, s l e e p y, y. and then a g letter or g, g e e, yeah. e, just the letter g. Yeah. Just the letter g. Okay. rsleepyg at yahoo.com. Yahoo yahoo com. Com. And what's Sleepy G mean? Yeah, what Sleepy G mean? Sounds well. like a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first name is Robert. My last name's Gray. And my friends thought uh, that I looked sleepy uh, in <laughs> high school. <laughs> so that's, that's a nickname that they gave me in high school. I think uh, you would have been better going with the rapper tag. <laughs> 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 All right, hey, we are out of time. We want to thank Robert for being with us today. And uh, keep uh, men like Robert in your prayers. He is... Uh, he served his country for 20 years uh, courageously as a member of our armed forces, and now he's out there serving the Lord full time. He's trusting in the Lord for all of his provision, and mm. the Lord has not let him down. He's uh, never had a place not to lay his head and, or food for his stomach. The Lord has provided mm. through the body of Christ. And uh, so please keep uh, Robert and his efforts uh, in your prayer. Email him with a word of encouragement. And uh, maybe there's some way uh, you can partner with him if he's in your part of the, the that's, country. That's if Sleepy G is awake when they contact him. That's if him. Sleepy G is awake. All right. Uh, tomorrow we're going to try to answer the question, uh, can you be an illegal immigrant and a Christian too? So wait for that one oh until boy, tomorrow. They won't sleep <laughs> excited about that one. <laughs> I'm working on these teasers. I'm working every day. You want teasers, and then you take my teasers. Here's and you, one. I'm whining. Are you ready? I'm ready. You won't believe what we've got tomorrow. Wow. Well, now i got to go find it. <laughs> Be encouraged, strengthened, and unafraid. Proclaim the gospel. We'll see you tomorrow. Presents On the Box.